Uh, this is Robert Beatty, uh, New York Times bestselling author. I'm going to talk about um, almost 20 years ago when I was a uh, true crime writer, traditionally published. Uh, of course, 20 years ago, there was no Kindle. So the world has changed a lot since then. This is uh, about my book, Language of Evil. This particular part here is a CBS News interview of me as the author. Uh, it was, uh, they may still do this, it's called uh, Buckham. And uh, that was me when I was younger. I'm an old man now in the called independent living portion of a nursing home, basically. Uh, interviewed by Barry Leibowitz. And If you're published, this can happen to you. You can be interviewed. I was interviewed on many television, radio, online outlets. This is the, uh, the book as published, Language of Evil, Robert Beatty, New York Times bestselling author of Nightmare Watch Dog. The Proofs. This is sent, as I mentioned, sent out earlier. Uncorrected proofs, not for sale. Scheduled publication date. It was actually published almost a month earlier. I bought copies in Borders Books, which tells you this is pretty old because uh, Borders Books no longer exists. Uh, signet imprint of Penguin. Now, uh, for the writers, I'm telling you what I was taught by everyone in the book business uh, in that era from Nightmare in Wichita to Language of Evil, primary elements of mainstream commercially successful true crime books. Now, the publishers did not invent these factors. They discovered them based on their many years of experience in book sales. The book buyers are telling publishers this is what they want. They would publish books and it wouldn't sell. They would sell few copies. Then they publish books and it sells many copies. And the books that sold many copies had these factors. The book must be about a murder. And you say, hey, there's all kinds of true crime, terrific caper stories. Well, uh, seven out of ten. These seven out of ten are about a murder. There are outliers. I already told you that. Seven out of ten. Very some. Eight, nine out of ten sometimes. But keeps coming back. Regression to the mean. The killer must be convicted of murder. The victim must be of a higher social status than the reader. Again, this 7 out of 10. Bell curve, 7 of 10, true is what I was taught, are high school graduates with no further education. Most are homemakers. If they work, it is either white-collar secretarial or blue-collar Rosie the Riveter type jobs or child care food service uh, retail cashiers, so forth. The other three out of ten are reading outside, generally outside their preferred genre. That, again, that's the bell curve. Now, if you show me a PhD who reads true crime, that reader is one of the three of ten and does not change these statistics. Doesn't mean, hey, I, there's a PhD, so I must have a PhD. 
<laughs> no. All right. The killer. The killer and the victim are usually, almost always, of a higher social status than the reader. Now, this single item eliminates many potential true crime books. Everything else might match. But if the killer is a meth head high school dropout, that book is unlikely to sell to a publisher and to sell to book buyers. The crime and trial was relatively recent. Now, there is a subgenre of cold cases. That's not what I'm talking about here. I'm talking about mainstream, commercially successful, traditionally published true crime books. Uh, the book is written at a junior high reading level on the Fleisch-Kincaid scale. Now, last time I tried to show this, when I this is not the first time I've tried to record this. Okay. Uh, I typed out notes on what to say to you, and these are the word readability statistics. Down here, you run the editor feature on your word program. Uh, Fleisch reading ease, 63.9. Very easy to read. So this is barely at the sixth grade reading level. And 0% passive sentences. So that's how you want to write it. You want to reduce or eliminate passive sentences and write it at the, you know, Middle school, junior high, 11. This is written in total at a seventh grade reading level, language of people. The chapter on DNA, which is a lot of science, is written at a higher level. Uh, unfortunately, after this book was published, I'm told by many readers they stopped reading in the DNA chapter. So, Part of the problem is uh, everyone working on this is well educated and read a good reader. All my editors, um, you know, they all had like masters of fine arts or master of arts degrees, and so uh, they're readers. They had no trouble reading this, so it didn't occur to them or to me. Uh, I just ran the book as a whole. What I've since learned, I do it chapter by chapter. Run the editor feature and get it down to a reading level I want. Okay, well, back to the, the case must have been difficult to solve. Easily solved cases do not make interesting reading. In my experience, most who approached me about writing about their, in quotes, true crime case, really want a memoir, not a mainstream commercial true crime book. Over, and I'm not exaggerating this at all, well over 100 law enforcement officers from across America, mostly homicide detectives, approached me about writing a book about them about, they would say about a case, you know. But when I kept asking questions about true crime, they want to tell me war stories. They want me to fly out to Philadelphia or Los Angeles or wherever they live and buy them whiskey while they tell me war stories. I did that some, but I, I it's, none of them turned out profitable. This did turn out a little bit profitable. There was discussion of making a movie, made for TV movie, made a TV miniseries. None of those panned out. And now, as I said, I'm an old man with heart disease, diabetes, arthritis. And I'm probably not going to... Uh, I, I do, uh, with a co-author, um, I have worked on, before my heart surgery two years ago, um, another true crime book. I don't know if we'll ever finish it. It's up to me, and I just don't have the energy I used to have. But you can write these true crime books 
wherever you are, I'm certain you've got a true crime, publishable true crime story, sadly. The book must be about a murder. You can't publish it or shouldn't till after a killer is convicted. Now, I don't know. In today's self-publishing, there are many cases you could go ahead and write a book and people will probably buy it, at least some copies online, write a cookie book. Uh... I just don't know. I, I only know about what I was told by people in the business side of publishing. They must have these in traditionally published 20 years ago, roughly. Um, these were the seven factors. And uh, your story may be a memoir, may not be a true crime case. If you're a, a victim or a family member of a victim, and there may be a market for that. But what I'm talking about here, again, mainstream, commercially successful, traditionally published true crime books. So if that's what you're interested in writing, uh, those are the factors. Best wishes to you.